In a crisis, we tend to panic and see only what is in front of us. We can't lose sight of the things we value and cherish most. While working on keeping ourselves healthy, we shouldn't forget to keep our planet healthy as well. The coronavirus pandemic has turned our lives upside down. Not too long ago, people in countries around the world were outside, making human connections, exploring the populated world, and uniting causes. Now, all of that has changed. Amid the COVID-19 outbreak, many health experts and government officials are urging that we practice social distancing to flatten the curve of the outbreak. Respiratory born viruses of any type, asymptomatic transmission has never been the driver of outbreaks. The driver of outbreaks is always a symptomatic person. But as we exercise our individual and collective responsibilities to reduce the vile transmission to preserve human health, we can still exercise our responsibility to act for environmental health. According to Nassau, with fewer people commuting, there's already been a significant change in the air pollution in China and in Italy. There's also been reports of clearer waters in Venice, with fish visible and swans bathing. Despite the good news, the current panic buying spree that can be seen all over the world takes away from the sustainability movement. We can use a solitary time to reassess our current habits and develop new ones that are better for the planet. While we're being told to practice social distancing, sustainability is how we can stay connected to the world. We journey into High School Eco Week from home to get insight on the actions we all can take for the planet while social distancing with the hope they'll stay, even after our global health crisis subsides. Eco Week consists of online events that aim to spread awareness about environmental issues and create a greener local community. We created a dynamic plan at Pomperog in order to engage the student body. Monday was designated for students to get out there and learn what they can do to ensure a greener future. Urging kids to listen in on Sustainable Focus podcasts, watch environmental documentaries, and get into some eco-educational books. I watched A Plastic Ocean and learned how our oceans are making sea turtles and sea lions in trouble with all of the plastic. I just watched the documentary Plastic Ocean and I just learned that there's a bunch of animals in the ocean dying because of the plastic because they're eating it. Tuesday promoted organizing household waste and recycles, tackling everyday waste. During this year's Eco Week, I learned about why it's super important to separate your recyclables by material. And the reason this is so important is because it expedites the whole process of getting them recycled. It's also important that you make sure they're thoroughly washed and that may just make sure that they can get through the recycling plant faster, more efficiently, and ensure that they're actually recycled. So that's what I learned from this year's Eco Week. Thank you. Eco-friendly DIYs are a fun and impactful way to kill a quarantine boredom. Zero waste DIYs can span from toothpaste, deodorant, non-toxic cleaning products through to soap bars, while undertaking an upcycling project can make a real change from preventing waste. One student sent me their new use to mason jars.
Thursday was to get kids cooking. Mindful eating is an important and not well addressed part of sustainability. We urge kids to try out some eco-friendly recipes. Okay, so we just made a very eco-friendly vegan organic smoothie. We have frozen berries, bananas, spinach, coconut milk, and some ice and stuff. Claire made her family curry, a vegetarian and eco-conscious meal. Eating a veggie diet means 2.5 times less carbon emissions than a meat diet. By replacing meat with vegetarian sources of protein, like the beans in her curry, we can reduce carbon and other greenhouse gas emissions. In recent times, young people, fearing the future of a hotter planet and angered by the world leaders failing to address the crisis, have gathered in masses on every continent for global climate protests. In New York City on September 20, 2020, the mayor's office estimated that 60,000 people marched through the narrow streets of Lower Manhattan. However, in the current situation where mass rallying is not possible, activists still fight for change. The Sunrise Movement in Connecticut organized a virtual climate strike on the Friday after Earth Day to continue requesting our state government to do the following. One, declare a moratorium on all new fossil fuel infrastructure and put an end to the proposed power plant. Two, expand energy efficiency and renewable energy. And three, ensure climate education in all public schools. Kids from Pomparag join people from all over Connecticut to hear inspiring speakers addressing the many perspectives of the green fight, rally their support with homemade posters, and learn how to contact our state legislators to share the critical steps in the fight against climate change. Activist groups throughout Connecticut continue to offer opportunities for citizens to take action for sustainable change. Now. What will you do? Take on an eco-week from home and embark on a quest to make change in an uncertain time.